Hello everyone, you may notice something a little different. I am a caramel girly now. Also, I'm gonna try to not keep touching my hair in this video because it's really annoying. I have not dyed my hair in around two years, which is crazy. I've not really spoken about this on YouTube before, but basically around May last year, I would say about 50% of my hair fell out. Um, and this was like a delayed reaction to things I think were going on earlier in the year. I never experienced hair loss before, anything to do with hair. Like I've always just been very naturally lucky with my hair, like it's always been long and thick and I've never really had to take like good care of it. Now I've been on a real journey with my hair. Yeah, it was actually really crazy how much my hair like affected my confidence. So I have a whole new level of respect for people who have problems with their hair and obviously my issue was nowhere near as bad as what a lot of people go through but for me and just because my job is so um centered around like my hair and my skin and my my exterior um it was kind of annoying i've spoken to a few doctors and no one can quite exactly pinpoint what it was from general consensus extreme stress um me moving country, the water change, and um, things to do with my birth control pill. So something within those three caused the hair loss. It could have been the combination of all three. But yeah, that's kind of an explanation on my hair loss. And I'm in a really good place with it now. I just feel like it's starting to come back to my old hair. I've been taking Nutrafol supplements. I take four a day, and I think they're really helping. Um, and yeah, just like oiling my hair, doing all the stuff you've seen on TikTok. I was trying to embrace the short hair because I've never had short hair before. I've always had hair down to like here. <laughs> I am loving the caramel. Let me know what you guys think. Um, please be nice because <laughs> I've really been going through it with my hair. But anyway, that was kind of a big sidetrack, not exactly what the video is about, but I just felt I needed to address the new hair. Um, today's video is actually very highly requested by you guys. I posted on my Instagram stories and my TikTok about underpainting and so many of you guys were really interested in it and I'm obsessed with it so I wanted to share kind of my take on underpainting and how I do it. So underpainting I think kind of became popular through Mary Phillips. She is Hailey Bieber, Kendall Jenner's makeup artist and I'm obsessed with Hayley and Kendall, so then it took me into my love for Mary Phillips and the way she does their makeup is just perfection. If, if I could choose anyone right now to do my makeup, I would probably choose her. Like, I just think she makes people look so enhanced. Like, she really enhances people's features and that's kind of what I try to do when I do my makeup. So, yeah, I definitely take a lot of inspiration from her. And she basically said that she sometimes underpaints on Hayley and Kendall and it kind of went viral and I tried it out and I haven't gone back. I have been doing my makeup like this for so long and I absolutely love how it looks. So I really want to show you guys how I do it. This is also more just my take on underpainting. It's not exactly how I guess Mary Phillips does it, but I try and stay as close as possible. And yeah, I really feel like I've mastered the right products for this. Like. I don't know, this just gives me the most perfect glowy base and I really want to share it with you guys. So yeah. So the way I've kind of structured this for you guys is in four stages as I just wanted to make it really easy for you to follow. Um, so first up we have skin prep, then I'm gonna go into the underpainting, then I do a coverage layer on top and then we do finishing touches. Let's start with skin prep. Okay, this is just over here because I have to mention this as I did use this this morning I don't want to do this on camera because I've like dried my hair and everything. I used Rhodes new cleanser this morning it's the pineapple refresh and I just have to give this a mention because very rarely am I ever like wowed by a cleanser and this cleanser is so amazing I am a huge Rhodes fan they kindly sent me this the other day and I've been using it ever since and it just leaves your skin feeling so clean but still really hydrated like I have nothing else on my skin right now because I wanted to show you guys like how I prep my skin and usually when I've washed my face and haven't put anything on it feels really like stripped 
but this just feels so hydrating it's really like balm light and it also gets off all your makeup so yeah i've been like double cleansing with this and i just feel it is working wonders first step i do is moisturizer i use the elemis pro collagen marine cream ideally i put this on like straight after i washed my face when it's still a tiny bit damp but just for the sake of today's video i'm just going to pop it on straight away i went to face gym yesterday i don't know if you guys have ever been before um let me know if you have but it's basically like a a workout for your face and they use like tools and everything it's like lymphatic drainage for your face essentially like extreme gua sha and today my face feels bruised and last night I literally had to take Tylenol for my headache because my face was hurting so bad like <laughs> the girl really went to town on me and it really actually hurt so I usually love face gym so much, but yeah, I must have had like a lot of tension or something because my face is really hurting right now. But I'm now using some eye cream. This is the Glossier Full Orbit Hydrating, Brightening, Smoothing Eye Cream. Um, I've been loving this. I did just do a partnership with them for this eye cream. And my favorite thing about it is honestly just how glassy it makes my under eyes look. It like encourages me to use eye cream because I never can be bothered to do it, but I think because it gives you that glass sheen, it kind of makes you want to add it to your routine or whatever. Um, and then going in with some of the Rode Peptide Glazing Fluid, which is unfortunately nearly finished. I need to get a new one, but this is very well loved, as you can tell. Oh, and I like to put on quite a lot of this because this gives you the most amazing glow under makeup. So just putting that on all over. This one is the salted caramel one. It's one of the OGs and it's still one of my favorites. Um, and then SPF, of course, this is the Ultra Violet. All these products are ones that give you a real glow, which is what I look for when I want like my skincare to prep my skin. Just make sure before you go into the underpainting, your skin is really hydrated and really prepped. And yeah, that is stage one complete. Okay, so another tip is once I've done my skin prep, ideally I like to leave my skincare on for like 10 minutes or so, just so it can really sink into your skin because I think when you go straight in with your makeup, it can look kind of bitty. Like, I don't know, I feel like it just makes your makeup look a little strange, so I don't like to do that so kind of give your skincare a chance to sit and rest in your skin and first things first is eyebrows i do my eyebrows first which i know may seem a strange thing to do as it's kind of a random step to start with but i promise you there is a reason for this also i'm talking but i can feel a sneeze coming <laughs> Um, I like to start with my eyebrows because for me I like to do my eyebrows and then I don't want them to move all day and whenever I use these kind of products that really hold your eyebrows in place after I've done my makeup they end up like mixing together and I just I don't want like a crustacean layer around my eyebrows so I like to do these first and then like clean up around my eyebrows just so everything is as fresh as possible. And I'm using the Refi Brow Sculpt, I think this is called, yes, Brow Sculpt. And this is an amazing product. Once I set my brows with this, they, they ain't moving. The trick with this product is to really use the brush that it comes with to like press your brows down. I've recently been trying to like take more time on my brows as I think your brows really like sculpt your whole face if you have like a strong brow down your makeup's just gonna be a slay then i just wipe off any of the little gel that got on my skin 
Okay, now the eyebrows are done, we can actually get into the fun stuff and that is the underpainting. So for this, if you wanna follow my vision, you're going to need a cream bronzer, a concealer, contour stick and a blush of your choice. Ideally a cream blush, like for this, you want all the products to be cream based. I'm gonna start off with contour. I love these milk sticks. I think milk is just like, it needs more hype as a brand, but I personally love them. And I think all these products are so cute. And I literally put these in my handbags and bring them everywhere with me. They're just so good for everything. They're so tiny, but they last so long. Like, I love them. Um, so this is the matte bronzer stick in the shade Baked. And I'm gonna come a little closer so you can really see where I apply this. This first is the contour of the cheekbone and I do this upwards like that rather than down here because I want everything to look really lifted. I then do it from like the angle of my eye upwards like that. It does look a little crazy but I promise you there is a method to all of this. Then I do a little on my jawline and then I take it all across my forehead, on my nose, around my lips. This is my favorite little hack. I love to contour my lips. And then I'm also just gonna do a little bit on my chin like that. Screenshot now if you want to remember that. Go in with the blush stick. This is the Milk Stick in Pick, and this is a lip and cheek stick. I actually do love to use this colour on my lips, like in the middle. It's so cute on your lips, it just adds like a little pop of colour. And I take the blush from like this part of my cheek and up like that. So you're kind of filling in the gap. And then I take it on my nose too. I just love like a little sunburnt nose vibe. So screenshot now if you'd like. And again, put, put like all of this to your preference. Like if you like to put blush up here, put blush up here, you know, just whatever works for your face is kind of the vibe with this underpainting situation. Um, I'm then gonna take some concealer. My personal favorite is this Kosas Revealer Concealer. Oh the hair, the shock of my hair is falling out. And this is in the shade 5.5. Just take it right here, here. And then where there's a little gap here, we take it upwards. I can just do a little under here too. I think the reason I love doing my makeup like this is because I love art and this is literally like painting. Like it's all like shading and highlighting on like a canvas, but the canvas is your face. So I don't know, I just think it's really fun. Then I take the cream bronzer. This is just kind of a little step that I've added in because I just feel like it adds a little extra, but I just put this onto my eyelids. Sorry, I'm like covering. My whole face. Screenshot this now if you would like to kind of memorize all the placements and we now have the really fun part which is blending this all together. So I'm using this hourglass brush and I take this side first and we just blend this all together and the thing with underpainting is you really don't need to be neat at all because you're gonna do it goes under your makeup so it doesn't really matter if things look a little unblended, whatever. That's the fun part about this. But I think like the benefits to doing this is you end up actually wearing less makeup because the makeup's only really where you need it. I feel like sometimes with contouring stuff, you just end up putting so much on and it's like, just looks cakey because your face didn't need it. Whereas this way, if you blend into these specific areas, I think it just looks, really precise and less cakey. Concealer. And I do kind of upwards. Just lightly blend the lip contour. Let me know 
your thoughts. I think that this alone is really nice makeup. If I wanna just be really natural, I kind of leave it at that. But um, in today's video, we're gonna give the full, the full effect. So we are now on to phase three. It's gonna be your, um, I guess, coverage stage. You can use like BB cream, foundation, CC cream, skin tint, anything that you like to use. I like to use a skin tint personally. This is the Hourglass one and I'm in shade nine. And I mix this in with this Glossier Future Dew. And I'm telling you, this combination is life changing. It's really life changing. This will give you the glowiest face. Like it's so incredible. It really looks like skin when you mix these two together and I just love it so much. So yeah, if you haven't tried that combination, try it out and let me know your thoughts. So I take some of that into the palm of my hand and then I also take a pump of this, a little concoction. I really don't take much of either of these products. I just really like to keep it light and I'm just blending them. You can already see like, it almost looks wet and that like, if I could go around with my skin looking like this, I would, but it just ends up looking very, very greasy. <laughs> you can see it gives your skin this really nice um, sheen to it. I personally think this looks like skin and that is what we're going for. And I think it's really what Mary Phillips aims to go for too. And I'm just gonna take my um, beauty blender and kind of run over the top of this all just to make sure it's extra blended. I mean, you could now go in with some extra concealer under your eyes if you wanted to, but I think today I'm just gonna leave it at that. And we can now get into the final phase, which is adding all the finishing touches to our makeup to make it look like a finished product. So the first thing I do is add a little bit of powder. I'm actually embarrassed to show my powder puff as it's absolutely disgusting. I just take like a little bit of powder picky, but you can see just, don't forget to do your eyelids too. I just do some other sections that kind of help carve your face. So I do just under where we contoured I really love just like a blushed makeup look. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury um, liquid blush. And this has a really nice little glow to it as well. I'm using the Refai Lip Sculpt. This one's in Rosewood. Liner is really an essential step for me. So I'm just lining my lips. I kind of go pretty smudgy and not too precise. It all just looks so much more natural. Honestly, it looks really cute just as that for a lip color. For my eyes, I'm just gonna curl my eyelashes. Just at the minute, I've been really enjoying just like a curled lash with no mascara. I think it just looks really natural. Um, lashes should be lashing. And then I'm going to add some highlighter. I'm using this Refai one in Topaz. It's a gloss highlight. And this is like my holy grail of highlighters because it really just looks kind of like how the effect skincare gives. It's more of like a glossy sheen rather than like a sparkle. So it just looks a lot more natural. I also have to take this just a little bit. Finishing touch, which is my favorite stage, is adding in some little beauty marks. I'm so freckly and in the winter they all just like disappear, especially under makeup. I have a pimple here, so I'm just gonna turn that into a mole. <laughs> okay, and that is the makeup complete. I absolutely love how this looks. I think it looks really natural, really sculpted, very professional. If you want your makeup to look like she knows what she's doing, I feel like underpainting is a really easy way to do that. And 
I don't know, I always feel very confident when I have my makeup like this because it's kind of just enhancing yourself rather than feeling like you have a ton of makeup on. Let me know if you guys found this helpful. I hope I explained everything in the best way possible. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already, please like, comment and subscribe. It means the world and it really motivates me to keep posting when I'm seeing your comments and you guys subscribing. So I see every single one of you and yeah, I just love you all so much. So thank you again for your continuous support. And yes, I hope you have an amazing rest of your week.